welcome to Smallville Fanatic Reviews. This is Season 1, Episode 18, entitled Drone. We open following a bee flying around the school, where the elections for the school president are underway. We are introduced to Sasha, played by Shonda Farr, whom you may recognise as Warren's robot girlfriend from Buffy. Sasha is running for president, and thanks to Pete, we are also briefed on the other candidates, Paul and Felice. How about Paul? Well, he's certainly the most qualified, but elections aren't about merit, they're about popularity. Which brings us to Felice, head cheerleader and president of the drama club. That definitely gives her an edge, not to mention that she's also really hot. Paul is working on his campaign posters, and he's drawn... He's drawn himself wearing a Superman costume. He's actually wearing a Superman costume! I can't believe they did that! How brain damaged can the writers be to think that this was a good idea? Oh, it's on now. I'm gonna send those fuckers a letter. Oh, fan mail! Anyway, he's in the bathroom, and here's something in his sink. They float. They float. And when you're down here with me, you float down! So Paul ends up in hospital. That's what you get for pretending to be Superman. Hey, did you notice that one of the guys that makes Smallville is called Greg Beeman? I bring this up now for no particular reason. Anyway, Pete has put forward Clark's name as a candidate against his wishes. What have you done? I see a big future ahead of you in politics, Clark. All you gotta do is show up, shake a couple of hands, give an election speech, it's easy. And somehow spontaneously gets everyone chanting. Clark! 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 Would that actually work in real life? Lex pulls over to help some hot chick with car trouble, but predictably she wasn't really broken down and just wanted to interview Lex for a newspaper. Who do you work for? I don't know what you're talking about. If I toss these into the woods, you really are going to need a tow truck. But he swiftly tells her to GTFO. I don't grant interviews, Miss Castle. I spent the better part of my life taking back entrances to avoid people like you. Elsewhere! Clark? What's going on? Why are you running? You've never shown any interest in student government. Don't worry, it's just a gag. Pete nominated me. So you're going to take your name off the ballot? Yeah. Well, good, because this election is way too important to turn into a joke. Sasha displays anger at Clark's surprise entrance to the elections and also towards the airhead cheerleader candidate. She was trying to buy this election like one of her Prada bags. Clark visits Lana, and as soon as she tells him he'd make a good school president, he changes his mind and decides to legitimately run. I think he'd make a great class president. Really? Yeah, you're honest, people trust you, and you have this innate sense of justice. I can see it on your face how upset you get every time you think somebody's being mistreated. You see all that in me? Yes, I do. Lana also complained that Talon's business isn't going very well, so he drops by to ask Clark, Lex why he hasn't not helped. not going to subsidize the money-losing operation. The Talon has to find its own feet. We could at least stop by and show some solidarity. Lex gives Clark some political advice. The man of tomorrow is forged by his battles today. Could I use that? I mean, the man of tomorrow for my slogan? Knock yourself out. Now, while I hate the prolific use of the word super and the costume during the show, the subtlety of the man of tomorrow here, which is actually one of Superman's nicknames, isn't so intrusive or overplayed. If you're going to make these Superman references throughout, this is a good example of how to do it. Organic to the story and not hideously in your face, like this. Man of tomorrow. Very catchy. Thank you, and thank you for the encouragement. You've got my vote. Hold on, you're voting for Clark just because you're friends? You haven't asked him about his manifesto or anything. Chloe has the right idea. Pete has faith in me and so does Lana. It's interesting that you don't. I just want to know what you stand for. I stand for truth, justice, and other stuff. Man, Man of, of tomorrow! tomorrow! Okay, 
Well, you want to be a little more specific? Like, tell me where you stand on the issues? Meanwhile, Sasha visits her shitty shed that she's spruced up with a colourful banner. In case she forgets which shitty shed is hers, I guess. So the big reveal that she controls the bees occurs in the form of the bees forming a giant face. I think this is supposed to be unsettling, and I appreciate that really. But if you can't do the effect well, you shouldn't do it at all. The only time this has been done successfully is in the Matrix Revolutions, and even then it was only just passable. So it's confirmed now, she has SUPER BEEKEEPING POWERS! Ah! You endorse Paul? Clark, I had to be objective. Clark becomes upset when he sees Chloe plans to back Paul for the campaign, and not Clark. Paul has a clear stance on issues you have yet to articulate. It's nothing personal. Makes sense to me. QQ much? the Talon, Lana is desperate for customers and is offering a two-for-one deal. I figure that's the last step before I institute topless waitressing. Yes, please! Lex drops by with some advice on how to beat the rival coffee shop. So what do you suggest I do? The Beanery has declared war. If you want to hold on to this place, you need to get creative. Be willing to get your hands dirty. Don't worry, I'm not suggesting anything illegal. Sure you're not. Back at school, Sasha tells Felice to drop out of the presidential race, and Felice ignores her, blah blah blah. Slutty reporter chick sneaks into Lex's mansion posing as a masseuse in order to persuade him into an interview. I thought you said you appreciated persistence. Besides, aren't I doing a good job? Lucky for you. Hey, that's not how you massage someone. This is how you massage someone. You get so good at this. Anyway, Lex agrees to the interview. Not yet, Miss Castle. I paid for an hour. Lex Luther, keeping that pimp hand strong. The principal finds Felice covered in bees and hopefully dead, because fuck that bitch. Chloe and Clark have an awkward conversation about the bee attack. Did you hear about Felice? Yeah, I was just at the medical center. She was stung way worse than Paul. She's in a coma. Hey, we've not had one of these moments for a while. Guess how long it takes them to figure it out. Two candidates attacked in a week. It's a pretty freaky coincidence. I think we've moved past coincidence. Well, what do you think's going on? I don't know, but remember last year Sasha's accident and she was stung by a whole hive of bees? You think because of that, she's somehow controlling them? If you said seven seconds, you run! but I'll look into it. Sasha catches up with Clark and tells him to drop out. She also finally gives us an idea why a crappy school competition that doesn't realistically mean anything is worth getting so worked up over. I really need this. My parents are riding me to win. They think if I don't win, I won't get into a good college. You have other activities. This is my thing. Why don't you just drop out? I'm sorry. I have my own reasons to see this through. You're making a mistake. That sounded like a threat. What are you gonna do, release the hounds with bees in their mouths and when they bark they shoot bees at you? Later, Clark and Lana Thanks, are in the talent when they hear a strange noise. Did you hear that? Yeah, it was coming from over there. In there. What is it? So what is it? I've never seen one before. No one has, but I'm guessing it's a white hole. Clark traps himself in a room with the bees. This would be a great moment to unleash his super breath for the first time, but he pulls a pipe out the wall, which sprays coldness over the room, and freezes every single bee dead. Our drones are under attack! What? My mind boggles at what actually happens there. What comes out that pipe? It's like liquid nitrogen, but it can't be. It was attached to the wall like a water pipe or something. Seriously? What the hell just happened? What if that thing sprung a leak? You'd have a room full of dead people, that's what. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened in Smallville. And it's going on the wall. And do you think anyone asked Clark what happened in that room? Hell no! I have a permit for that. Picture of Killaway's wife. What? Uh-oh. 
Clark then sneaks into Sasha's crap shack. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, Chloe. Lana told me about the talent. Thanks for the call. Sorry. They make up and some goo drops onto Clark's shoulder. This feels like honey. This feels like honey? How can he tell that's honey from touch alone? Yeah, that's what you usually find in a hive. What the f- oh, How did they not see that when they walked in? They would have smelled as well! Oh, oh, man. I think she's emitting something called the Queen Mandibular Pheromone. So Chloe now explains why Sasha has beekeeping powers, but at this point, who really cares? She also has a theory of Sasha's Achilles heel. If she doesn't like the way the vote goes, the school won't be a pretty sight. Neither will she. Bees are only loyal to a point. Once she loses control, her scent will change and the bees will know. They won't be happy. Yeah, that makes sense. Clark invites Sasha to his barn and confronts her, telling her he knows she's been using the bees to attack people. She begins summoning the bees. Where are you sending them? You may be thick skin, but what about your mother? This is where a simple little <coughs> would solve the problem. The bees go after Martha in a cool slow mo fashion, but Clark speeds in and hides her in the storm shelter. I've never seen bees attack like that. Where do you think they went? Sasha returns home. Hello. How'd you get here? The bees turn on Sasha as Chloe predicted, even though it makes no sense, and start exploding the windows in, as bees often do. The pain. The pain. So how does Clark save the day? He throws a screwdriver into a gas canister which blows the place up. Of course, because so much of this has made sense already. You know what I would have done? I would have had Clark punch each individual bee at super speed. Kind of like Ken from Fist of the North Star. <laughs> Imagine that! That would be cool! Now to dispose of the body. The wrap-up reveals that everyone who's injured in this episode is recovering and not dead, as we were led to assume. The other guy won the election, not Clark. Lana's business is booming again, and Clark asks Lex a rather interesting question. Have you ever thought about getting into politics? Someday I'd like to be president. Oh yeah, that slutty reporter chick subplot ends once Lex discovers she wrote a scathing article, so he does her a favour to keep it from being published. These things are almost always irrelevant to the overall plot, but serve to show how devious and calculating Lex can be. They saved the best scene for last though! Can you guess what's in it? Dennis! Topless waitressing.